Good afternoon. I am making kale chips and this flavor profile I think is right up my alley. So I'm using giant bunch of kale which has been rinsed, spun dry, and then in a huge bowl I've added Hold on. I have a cough or a sneeze or something. <coughs> Excuse me. I added half a cup of peanut oil, zero trans fats, and the reason I'm using peanut oil is that it withstands much higher temperatures, and I'm putting these in the oven at 375, I may even turn it up to 400, and then about a quarter cup of ponzu, which is a citrus seasoning dressing, and then nutritional yeast sprinkling over the whole thing. So as you can see, there's some nutritional yeast. And to be honest, it tastes delicious as is. Like this. Oh my god. I'm going to have to remember this for salad, quick salad dressing for kale because it is to die for. No salt, no pepper. The ponzu and the nutritional yeast give it delicious flavor. Peanut oil and... Um, I think it's organic peanut oil. Oh, I already threw out the bottle, sorry. So whenever possible, try to get organic. I understand not everybody can afford it, not everybody has access to it. At least read the ingredients. If there's stuff you can't pronounce, try not to buy it. So that's going in the oven right now. I'm gonna grab another pan, and I'm probably gonna need to do two batches of two pans. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. I just read something that made me really want to talk about this particular topic on video. And it's about marriage. For those of you who are single, you could chuckle along, and for those of you who are married, will probably, hopefully, chuckle along, because it rings true. When I see a young couple about to get married, who are in the throes of the initial ah, uh, part of the relationship where everything is just lovely. Oh, what a cute little fart. Yeah, that cute little fart's going to turn into something not so cute. And people grow. Um, who I was in my 20s when I got married is not who I am today. Sometimes people grow in the same direction. Sometimes um, partners grow in different directions or at different speeds. You know, somebody could be doing really well in their career and the other partner just stagnant or not so well or not employed at all because of a myriad of reasons. It is important to stay flexible and I think one of the primary reasons, it's second reason, the primary reason is because I truly care for my husband, but one of the other reasons why I think we've stayed together as long as we have is I think we're both extremely stubborn. <laughs> Which sometimes, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It could be a good thing because stubbornness can also lead to persistence. Um, if you're stubborn and you don't want to give up, um, it means you can accomplish things even when there's initial failures. But marriage is more than just blissful moments of happiness. That does not sustain a marriage. Um, sex does not sustain a marriage. Um, that hazy, in-love puppy thing, that doesn't sustain a marriage. Marriage is respect, I think, first and foremost. And love and... Um, yeah, respect is a very, very, very big thing. I, from the marriages that I have seen fall apart, one of the first things that seems to go is respect for one another. Whether one person is at fault for doing something they shouldn't have or didn't communicate to the other partner, it's very... It's difficult to 
regain respect once it's been lost. And sometimes that never happens. Sometimes there are moments in a relationship where it's kind of like if you're watching a movie, it's a light bulb over the head. Yeah, if this happens now and it has been happening, it's not going to change. All of these things are probably on people's minds who are in relationships on a regular basis. I don't think that there's any one couple, whether they've been married a year or 70 years, that didn't have moments of trial or in tribulation or when they didn't really want to see each other's faces. What makes it all worthwhile, besides the obvious things for when you have a family you're raising together. For example, Polly and I do not have a family. We don't have children. We have pets. We have chickens. And we are a family of two humans, plus our menagerie of animals. But we try to do things for each other. Sometimes with, you know, always with, hopefully always with the best of intents. Not always with the best of deliveries. And I'll give you an example. <laughs> and the reason why I'm even talking about this today. Um, we started a new financial plan April 1st. Today is the 4th. So four days ago. The, what we both agreed to, it's not like I set the rules, but I made some suggestions because I'm, I'm the one who pays all the household bills. I'm the financial planner for the family. My number one request was to all, bring all receipts home. I don't want to have to second guess what's going on with the account. I don't want to, because we have a joint account and then I have a personal account. And that personal account has gone on, gotten us out of some tricky situations at times when Polly's less than forthcoming. Since this is an issue I'm aware of with him, I try to remove as many stumbling blocks as possible. That's why we decided to do a new financial plan starting April 1st. Every receipt, no matter how minor, I said I don't care if it's a $2 receipt. You need to bring that home because then you get into a habit. You get into a habit of bringing your receipts home. And at the end of the month, we're going to sit down together. And I'm going to show you exactly what you've spent. And then you'll see for yourself, this is me talking to Polly, just how much, ex how much of the expenses are completely unnecessary. Silly things. So last night, I had ordered some prints, free prints on Walgreens. And although I ordered them late in the afternoon, they said they wouldn't be ready until 9.26 in the evening. And Polly happened to leave work at 9 o'clock. And I thought, uh, rather than me run out to go pick him up, if he's going to be passing by Walgreens anyway, because it's on the way off the highway to the house. So I called him and asked him if, if, he was, if he thought he could stop. I said, but don't worry, you know, don't feel pressured to say yes. I can always run out the following morning. It's not like they're going to expire. The point was to order them that uh, before midnight so they're processed for the 10 free prints. And he said, oh, no problem, I'll stop by. So I was making dinner on video yesterday, and he stopped by, picked up the prints, and came home. When he came in, I hear a rustle of a plastic bag or more, which made me a little hesitant. <laughs> Uh, as it turns out, he bought uh, some things while he was at the store. And he literally had just one thing to pick up at the photo counter. So my initial gut reaction was, holy crap, really? You had one item to pick up, which was free, and now you come home with two bags full of stuff. So he puts them in front of me and says, I bought this for you. Which, <sighs> it's sweet. I appreciate he thought of me, but as I started looking in the bag, there were some things that were not for me. <laughs> and I'm not saying I have to control what he's purchasing for himself, but there were like silly things, like not necessary things, like peeps. Neither one of us need the sugar. Then there was ice cream. Then there was Fritos. And then there was these 
like all sorts of different chocolates and he's like oh I got these for you I'm like honey I've asked you not to bring sweets into the house I'm trying to eat fruit if I get that craving and if it's here it's more likely to be consumed rather than if it's not here and I would need to get into my car to drive and buy it so I started out that's the way I started off I said do we really need these things I he you know, I said, I just asked you to stop by the store to pick up the one item that was free. He goes, oh, I didn't know it was free. I'm like, does it matter whether it was free or not? I'm like, the whole point was, if you weren't going to go, I would have gone the following day. I would have saved it. And I looked at the receipt, and that's when my blood started to boil. <laughs> because it was like $50. $50. He did, in his defense, he did pick up something for our dogs, uh, these chicken dehydrated treats, which they adore, and that was $12. But that means the rest of the stuff, oh, and he gave me cash. He's like, I, I took cash out because I know you don't have any cash in your wallet. So I just, I, I instantly felt like everything that I've been trying to preach for this month of April, and that's why you're staring at April, <laughs> kind of went out the window. He meant well but he went against what he agreed we were both going to do. And the only reason I even ordered those prints was because they were free. So I felt like there was a lack of communication and not necessarily on my part. So where does that leave you? Where does that leave me? Um, we both got upset. <laughs> Words were exchanged, not nice words, and that happens in relationships. I don't, I don't care how blissfully happy you say you are, there's always going to be situations in a relationship where the two people do not agree. Um, the way I see it, it's like communism. It's brilliant on paper, it doesn't always work in reality. <laughs> I mean... Communism is brilliant. Why wouldn't sh why shouldn't everybody have everything they need or equally what everybody needs? But it only works on paper because human nature is such that yeah, it's just not possible. And I lived the communist life for the first ten and a half years of my life. I saw the fact that there was a huge disparity even amongst people who were supposed to be equals. So for those of you who are in the initial stages of your relationship with a, your significant other, male, female, absolutely no difference. Um, if you have respect for each other and acknowledge the fact that another person can have differing feelings, so long as it's not core, ch core differences that you could not get along, be aware of the fact that there will be ups and downs, and sometimes the ups are euphoric and the downs are miserable. So we started fresh again today. Um, Polly left without saying anything to me, but I did make him lunch last night before going to bed. And that's the respect and love and all of that. So we could disagree, but we still sleep in the same bed. Neither one of us is allowed to leave. Um... Well, I don't mean allowed to leave like you're locked in, but we long ago decided that that was going to be our thing. We'd never go to bed separately. If we're mad at each other, we still have to sleep in the same room. I was tempted, but you know, you know how that goes. So there's a glimpse into what might look topically as blissful happiness. And there are times when it is blissful, but that can't be a sustainable norm. That's just not realistic. So for whatever it's worth, fight, but fight fairly. If you have something you need to bring to your spouse's attention, make sure you use facts instead of your personal opinion. And hopefully you will get the respect for having that particular opinion, even if it differs from your spouse. So that might be enough for now. I've already babbled on for long enough um who was it who said oh somebody i don't care if they, someone said i, I talk too much that's the opinion i wanted to share with you today so i'm approaching 70 you know, 70 
5,800 subscribers. I wonder how long it'll take me to get to 6,000 because I'd love to do a giveaway. I haven't given, done one in a while. I don't think if I did one at 5,000. No, I don't remember. But anybody taking any bets? At 125 a month. I lose subscribers a lot. See, there's a little stat. Oh, sorry, stat. But, oh, look at that. Views. That still boggles my mind. Over two and a half million views. Bizarre. But I love it. I appreciate it. Thankful. So, let's see. Put your guesses. How many... How long do you think it'll take me to get to 6,000 subscribers? Although, if people share my videos, that does spread the word. Um, and I get questions all the time. Why do you leave on... Oh, my battery's about to go... Why do you leave ratings on if you don't like thumbs down? And I always get, I seem to be getting quite a few thumbs down recently. It's because when you turn the ratings off entirely, the thumbs up doesn't uh, work either. So it's thumbs up and thumbs down that the rating is turned off for. And for every time somebody thumbs up a video, it appears in their... Um, activity queue so everyone that they subscribe uh, that subscribes to their channel sees that they watched a video and they liked it so it kind of spreads the word that way and I get a lot of new subscribers from existing subscribers watching a video and liking it or sharing it or adding it to their favorites or you know whatever playlist they have Let's say they like a recipe that I showed in one of my vlogs and they add it to their recipe. And you can, you can cue a video to save it or share it from the moment the actual cooking portion of my daily vlogs um, start. And maybe I should do a video about that. So yeah, so th that's why I leave it on because I like the fact that people share and kind of spreads the word and... If you enjoyed something, then you share it. That's what I do, and that's why I thumbs up videos and leave comments and share. So, yeah, because cause I'm like that. All right, I'm really procrastinating doing the refrigerator. <laughs> I don't know why. I have a lot of leftovers. But I'm definitely making the fish and risotto tonight because I have that turkey stock, and I don't want it to go bad, and there's no preservatives in it, so it doesn't. it's not going to keep for that much longer. So, yeah, that's what I'll be making today after work. But it will definitely help me to run out during lunch. Because I have a two-hour meeting at two o'clock, so it's going to keep me busy until four. I'm just thinking out loud. Alrighty. Oh, before I forget, my mother and I met up for um, coffee yesterday. And this is a little teddy bear that Polly gave me, so I put some earrings and some bling on her and... Um, a purple ribbon, but she gave me this. She goes, Dad was cleaning out some boxes in the attic, and he came across this. She goes, do you think this is yours? I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's not Dad's. <laughs> I don't even remember getting this. It's from Art Coning Emporium. Gosh, I don't even remember. But, yeah, little glitter. With a shaker box top, Ross glitter, three quarter ounce, and there's less than half in there. So obviously I used it on something, but for the life of me, I don't remember. And then Mom said that she has a whole box of poems I wrote her, but I don't remember doing that either. <coughs> but apparently I did. So yeah, she goes, well maybe someday I'll share that with you. Like it's a big secret. Well if I wrote them, why can't I see them? <laughs> She could be funny sometimes. So, yeah, I guess they're going through stuff in their house because they're going to be listing the house for sale. And um, she's finding all these little treasures. So she gave me that little glitter bottle. She goes, oh, if you, can you, is it something that you could use? I'm like, uh, heck yeah. She goes, if not, you could just throw it out. I'm like, I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to use it. So now I have to come up with a project I could use it on. Oh, I already have a little something, something silver. I could just add... Hmm. Oh, so wheels are spinning. All right, be back. Okay, a couple of things. My meeting just ended. I just received this um, branch punch from Blitzy. Love the punch. It's a Martha Stewart punch. But I thought, oh, 
why don't I try punching out this silver foil? Ordinarily, I back the, I take it off and put on a piece of cardstock and then punch. But I decided, oh, I'll just punch it that way and it'll be stickers. Could I have made, I could not have made a worse move. That was horrible. There is super sticky, because this is elect, it's um, duct work tape. So it has a pretty strong adhesive on it. It gummed up my entire punch. I just now cleaned it out where there must be a squirrel they don't like in the front yard that it's uh, running smoothly, but I'm gonna get some um, wax paper or parchment paper and clean it off. So do not use sticky side tape on your uh, punches. It's bad idea. Bad idea. A little piece can gum up the works very, very quickly. And the way I got it undone is I put my scissors in between there and then peeled away all the sticky parts with a pair of tweezers. That took forever. Second, I got my nutritional yeast order and oh, OMG, delish. Um, yeah, I did. I stuck my finger in there and tasted it, which I think I'm going to use on my kale chips. So for those of you who have never tasted nutritional yeast, let me open this up. And the paper has, there's a reason why I have the paper underneath. Oh my gosh. Hold on. One-handed. I don't want to spill it. Okay, so nutritional yeast. It's flaky. Let me show you. See that? The closest that I could describe the flavor, um, it's not yeasty. It's not like um, eating a sourdough piece of bread. It's really more like, you know the potato chips at the bottom of a bag? Like the best plain potato chips minus the salt, that's what that tastes like. But you can add that to all sorts of recipes. So I think today I'm going to use it on the kale and make kale chips with nutritional e yeast, which make it taste like cheesy chips. Literally, cheesy chips. But there's no salt in that. Uh, this one has 20 calories per tablespoon, uh, two grams of carbs, one gram of dietary fiber, and three grams of protein. So, yeah, yum. Look at the, um, riboflavin, 160% of your recommended daily allowance, thiamine, niacin, folic acid, really good stuff. So I just read, ooh, hopefully I didn't tilt that out too much. So I'll close that off. Ooh, I did dump a little bit. And the reason the paper is sitting out in front of me, this is the junk paper that you receive. I don't know if everybody gets this. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm trying to get a, make, uh, put a stop to it. It has all sorts of circulars, but we receive a Sunday paper. I don't want to keep getting this junk every Thursday, and this comes every single Thursday. So I'm going to contact this, the, I think this is put out by the Hartford Current. So I'm going to call them and find out how I can get this to stop. I talked to the mail carrier a couple of times, and each one that I talked to said, there's no way to stop it. But I can't imagine that I have to agree to receive junk mail from a company that you know identifies themselves because they want my they want you know they want me to be a customer. First of all, I'm already a customer. Then stop sending me this junk. And what one carrier told me, my mail carrier told me is this will stop if you get a subscription. But we already have a subscription. It's only a, it's a Sunday one. So I'm wondering if they keep sending this unless you have um, every day. So I'm gonna call them and find out and I'll let you know. I could not resist coming outside for a little while. Everybody's exploring. I'm letting my toes get some sun. I have to do my toenails now. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's see what the temp is. Chickens are talking. Oh, I have to go give them some fresh water. I think it's in the low 50s. Hey, Mushki. 
The dogs are just going crazy sniffing stuff. Oh, thanks for peeing on my raised bed, Chester. That was very sweet of you. It's 54. I can't even see that, sorry. Trust me, it's 54. It's only gonna get nicer. So I might change out of my sweatshirt. So I have a two o'clock meeting so I can run out to the produce place. But first I wanna enjoy this gorgeous sun. I think the last patch of snow that's right there is gonna melt shortly because it's in the shade. I should probably clean the coop out today. It's garbage night and our canister is pretty empty. Honey, I've already thrown that like five times and you can't play too much. I don't want him to get so tuckered out that he's sleeping the rest of the day and the grass is growing. So excited about that. Green patches, love that. It'll be very nice to see that. Yeah. I'll get revived. See, we have some patches over here. I don't know what kind of grass this is, but it gets really, really tall. Yeah, we have plenty of spring cleanup to do too. Hoping that the snow is now long gone, moved on. Oh. Uh, yeah, I could work out here today. Well, technically I could. You hear the girls talking? They're like, uh, get off your arse and bring us some water. I have my water. See? <laughs> they want to come out for a, for a walk, but I don't want to let them out um, and then have to leave. I would rather be here in case I hear some commotion so I can get them all locked into their coop so I might let them out for a little jaunt later this afternoon look at how e eagerly these three are sniffing stuff it's like a doggy conference What'd you guys find? Nothing. Just seeing if anybody's been on our property that's not allowed. I'm gonna go stop by the turtle. I wish we had a completely fenced in backyard so I could just let him out on days like this. They could roam around. I'm just not entirely comfortable leaving them out for any prolonged length of time. We have hawks, we have coyotes, there's bears, there's, I don't even know. There's even been moose all the way down here. So, I don't really want to eat. Oh man, Mushka's rolling around. She probably found some dirt she liked the smell of. So funny. Yeah, alright, I'm going to enjoy this for a few more minutes and then Go in and, oh, Chester's pooping. Go in and uh, get my next item crossed off my to do list and check the fridge to see which produce we need. I'm really excited that somebody actually bought that store because I was going to be really bummed if we didn't have a produce place that close, that convenient, um, that affordable, and had a turnover. I'm hoping that this place really survives um, it looks like they're really putting some money in um, there's going to be a deli counter which is pretty exciting because oh Chester what are you doing now it's his turn to roll around that's a happy dog <laughs> oh my gosh I can't believe we've had him for 12 years already or he's been living with us for 12 years he was a rescue puppy off of one of those big semis stuffed with dogs. Oh, here comes Runner. Oh, it's running time. Are you guys ready to go in? 
Mushki, you ready to go in? You want to go get some water? All right, come on. No, no, Chester, we're not playing. 